Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now today, I'm going to talk about something that's going to be really weird. Weird concept. Weird, weird, weird concept. And you'll know it already by the title before you even press play. So the title of this is Make Friends With Your Stress. What a stupid title, you may think. What a ridiculous arsy thing to say you may think make friends with my stress I hate my bloody stress I hate it causes me nothing but problems hate 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 it fair enough I completely I'm with you on that I understand where you're coming from So what am I going on about? Make friends with your stress. Well, now I've said it out loud, maybe I'm going to not bother with the recording. Nah, bollocks to the stress. Horrible thing. Ugh. But, however, if you think about it in a different way, If you remember that your whole body is functioning to support your life, a lot of automatic stuff going on, you breathe in the oxygen, you know, it goes into the lungs, then the oxygen gets spread around the arteries into your heart whatever blood's pumping blood through your body and you, you know I'm not an expert on anatomy <laughs> obviously but you know your kidneys your lungs your liver uh, all the different parts of your body your stomach your skin even things that you don't even perhaps take much notice of Everything is there to help you and me. That's the one purpose, the one overall goal that our bodies have is to keep us alive and to help us. It doesn't always do it in a way that we would like it to. But it's there to help us. So in a sense of pain. Someone, you break your leg, for example. It hurts like buggery. It hurts more than bug. Well, no, anyway, it hurts. It's absolutely agony. But once you've actually had the diagnosis, you know your pain, you know the reason for it... You've got it in plaster. You know not to put any weight on it. You don't need the pain anymore, but your body still gives you that pain. It was. It does. You know, reduces over time. So you could say, "Well, the damn body, give me that pain. I don't need it." You know, because logically, you don't need it anymore. But your body is protective of you. And it wants to make sure that you don't stand on that leg. Because without pain, we could seriously damage ourselves. You know, so that's one kind of angle to look at it. And by the way, I've got little ferrets just run out. Which is lovely. He's now doing a big poo. Great. Thanks, Andre. 
So the concept of making friends with our stress comes from the angle of if the body is out to protect us, to keep us alive, therefore so's the brain. The brain is part of the body, you know, there's a thing called a neck connects it. It's connected. The brain is the body. The body is the brain. The spinal cord. Well let's face it, without the brain there wouldn't the body would be nothing but just a floppy jellyfish. But not being able to do anything. So the brain therefore is out to protect us to care for us, to keep us alive at all costs. So that that's the fact stuff, that's the the reality is you know, without any emotion connected, that those are the facts. Our brain and our body want us to be alive and want us to feel well and therefore our brain is our best friend and without the brain there's no mind and you might say yeah the mind's separate from the brain the personality that's completely separate well a brain injury can change someone's personality overnight which proves that the personality comes from the brain if someone has a, for example as there it was it's a story actually but it's not really relevant to this but this person was very very violent person and um they ended up having a brain scan and it turned out they had a tumour in their brain had the tumour removed no longer violent so our personalities aren't quite as uh, mystical perhaps as we like to think they are it's to do with our brain our brains that's where it all comes from of course we learn behaviour but our brains are that's the hub and our brains want us to be alive our brains want us need us to be well We also have free will. So we do things that damage our bodies. I do. I'm sure most of you do as well. Even if it's just eating too many cakes. Or um, some people would do it by over-exercising. Or by, you know, uh, drastic dieting. Some will do it by just because of their job. They might be breathing in. You're just walking up the road to the shops. I'm breathing a lot of car fumes. That's not healthy for my body. You know, it's always, there's always stuff going on where we're not perhaps doing the best that we could do for ourselves. That's not a criticism. It's just, it's the society we live in. It's hard to avoid that stuff. But that stuff can cause stress put stress on our immune system, put stress on our bodies. Working in a job. Generally, it's hard, you know, this is society relies on us working or contributing in some way. Uh, it's all about money. Paying off, you know, just, you know, society, the governments rely on getting people into debt. That's how they function. So that people have to do stuff they don't want to. 
like working a job that they don't like working in causes stress. A lot of this, these things are unavoidable. It's it's difficult sometimes to avoid just life. It's stuff that happens in life. We can't be in control of what other people do, can we? Um, so where I'm going with this is our bodies care about us, love us. I mean, it's so, well, how do I know my heart loves me? It's beating. And it's it will do everything it can for the rest of your life to beat, to pump blood around your body. It will do everything it can. Your liver will do everything it can to keep working, same as your kidneys and all the other parts of your body. They never give up. They do wear out and they do get ill and you know, obviously people have problems sometimes with that parts of their body. But that part of the body never gives up in itself. It will continue until it can continue no more. Never ever. If that was a marathon and our hearts and our bodies were in a marathon, there'd be no quitters. The body would always win. Not win the marathon, always complete the marathon. Because your body never gives up. Of course it stops working. Everyone's body eventually will stop working. But it never gives up in its you know, in its own right because it wants to stay alive. And your brain, which controls the body, wants you to be happy. Because when you're happy it affects the brain. So what you do affects the brain, the brain affects you. Your body affects the brain, the body affects you. You know, it's all connected, all affects each other. So the stress that we all have, everyone has stress, even the most relaxed people in the world have to have a degree of stress. Although I think it should be called something different. You know, the stress in the body in order to stand up. Uh, this, to be able to release that energy to run for the bus or to uh, move quickly when required. And some people will say that they work really well under stress. Leaving things to the last minute. Maybe they work, I used to work in sales and I would probably would have told you that stress was one of the good things. Uh, not good things as in the feeling, but there's there's a level of stress which felt good. Adrenaline, um, pumping, uh, the reward section of my brain kicking in. I've got another sale, blah, blah, you know. But that is stress. But there's there's a level that can feel good. That's not, again, obviously what we're talking about here. No one listens to a podcast because they want to uh, deal with something that feels good. Now, I want to get rid of a good feeling, please. No. No one's ever said that, ever, I don't think, in the history of the world. Yeah, can you take that nice feeling away, please, Jason? No. So it's about uncomfortable feelings feeling crappy and that's at the lower level of stress because anxiety panic attacks that's a different ball game that's in a different that's not feeling crappy that's for those that have never had a panic attack or anxiety attack um, and if you have never had one I hope you never do have one 
and hopefully listening to this podcast, listen to the relaxation sessions, hopefully your stress levels will reduce. That's the point of it. Your stress levels will reduce by listening regularly and you'll never get to that point. Or if you have been in the past, you won't again. Because the sensation of relaxing it's almost like there's that um, I've talked about it before the overflow like you're having a bath or a sink the overflow is kind of almost put in the first time you listen to me even if I might, might not mention an overflow that overflow is put in there so there's a level you can't go above There's a level you can't go well. Of course, if you put the taps on, if you put both taps on full blast, then it's going to, yeah, the override's not going to stop it, I guess. It will overflow. The over, you know, but if you've just got one tap on and they're not on full, which is part of the reason why you can allow your body to slow things down because there's always more than one feeling happening more than one sensation uh, occurring in your body and in your mind at the same time it's never just one thing human beings generally aren't that focused There's always other things going on. If you've got your eyes closed, you've got that visual component, you can hear things, you know. It's not just the physical and emotional sensation of stress that's there. You can also feel your feet, you can drink something and taste it. Which means there's other stuff going on in your body and your mind. And... It can feel, and we can tell ourselves sometimes, and I have done, this is all I'm feeling. I'm, only fe- I'm feeling stressed, almost like that's all there is. Well, if that was the case, then does that mean that your body's not functioning? Your heart must have stopped then, your lungs must have stopped. Uh, no blood circulating there, which means you've got no no oxygen going in and out, which means you probably can't talk. So how are you telling me that that's, that's all you've got? It's a stress. It isn't all you've got. There's a million other things going on inside you that have got nothing to do with the stress. which goes back to your body. Your body is still doing all the stuff that it needs to do to stay alive. It hasn't got time to give its full attention to a stress feeling. It doesn't have it. It can give a a fair bit, but it can't give its full attention because it still needs to function still needs to run and I know sometimes we can think well our body's not functioning you're alive therefore your body's functioning and I don't mean that in a uncompassionate way just in a practical way in a kind of let's, let's just be real here for a sec there's more going on So when you realise there's more going on in your body than stress, when you realise that actually the stress isn't even in the top ten, it's just what you're focusing on. So, you know, there's... You could be in a helicopter above a motorway, uh, high enough, 
but low enough to be able to see cars. And maybe you can see a lorry. And you're focusing on a lorry and it's got a big yellow cover in. Uh, and you can see it and that's all you're focusing on, that yellow lorry. That motorway maybe have within your site there may be 3,000 vehicles. You're focusing on that lorry. Which would be, I guess, if a, in a, a police pursuit, helicopter with a police in chasing one car, that's what they're focusing on. But there's a lot of other stuff going on. And as the police are chasing that car, that car's zooming down the road, there's probably people in the lay by uh, doing drug deals, you know, lorries swapping over kilos of cocaine and stuff. But the police are not noticing that because they're focusing on that car that's speeding. It might even be a car that's crashed, that's in a ditch. They're not noticing that because they're focusing on that, that red car that's speeding. That's all they're focusing on. So, brings it to that, doesn't it? Focus. What are we focusing on? Now, stress has a way of grabbing your attention, doesn't it? It can have a way of that. Uh, anxiety attacks, wow. It's very good at sort of like grabbing you. Now, i found a way of calming it down myself. So that I don't let it get that energy. So it's the first sign of a feeling. I just breathe out. I breathe it out. And I decide, I decide in my head, no. No. This, I look around at the reality of the situation. If I'm in a situation, so if I'm just sitting here, and I've had panic attacks just sitting down, or the beginnings of them, uh, more which is more more now. I don't really have full blown attacks. Uh, I breathe out, and I look around, and I think, well, is there a reason? For me to have this feeling. Is there really a legitimate reason? Now. If someone was trying to break the door down. That's the worst time in the world to have a panic attack anyway. Because how can I defend myself? How can I phone the police? How can I do what is needed. In that situation. But, you know, there's the whole thing about uh, with anxiety. And it always used to be just two things, didn't it? Um, fight or flight. But there's, t there's three Fs. There's freeze. And I, I think it's more acceptable now, but it never used to be. I've read loads of books. The amount that didn't mention the freeze part which in my mind is almost the worst one because if something's really bad's just happened now you legitimately have a reason to be scared to be f it's normal it's, getting rid of stress isn't getting rid of being human or reducing stress rather isn't isn't to do with getting rid of natural reactions and in a situation like a car crash, it's natural to be petrified of what's just happened. But you also need to act. You need to get out of that car where you need... If you've witnessed something, you need to phone an ambulance or... You know what I mean? You need to be able to function. But... If for any reason you aren't able to, and I've been in situations where I'm not able to, or haven't been able to function, or 
I've frozen. Let's just say frozen. And then I felt guilty afterwards. Or I felt stupid. I felt like less than a man. I, I've frozen. Why have I done that for? That's ridiculous. I could have dealt with that situation. It happened when I was 16 or 17. I was out with a friend. We were drunk. And he turned on me and started attacking me. I froze. And I let him. I blocked, blocked some stuff. But I didn't... I didn't have to allow him to do that. And I could have put him on his ass. But I didn't. Or I could have ran away. You know, but I didn't. I just stood there. And... I froze. I didn't know what to do. It was almost as if I kind of got catalepsy. So I was just like, oh, very weird. So that seemed to be my place to go to, kind of freezing rather than fleeing. Freezing or fleeing. Fighting seemed to be the one I didn't go to. When quite often fighting is the place perhaps you do need to go to. Not physically, but to have that energy to do something. To protect yourself, to help someone, whatever. So when you think from that perspective, with stress, if it puts you into a fight flight or freeze situation the three F's it's trying to help you the stress is trying to help you the anxiety is trying to help you it's put you into a, a situation where I don't think we necessarily have a choice which one we go into whether it's fight, flight or freeze never felt like a choice to me But by thinking about it and maybe planning ahead and imagining future situations, how you would like to respond to such a situation in the future by rehearsing it will give you a better chance of choosing your response. if such a thing happened so freezing fight or flight all help you now you say well how does freezing help you a lot of animals do that don't they they freeze when they're being hunted or being attacked they freeze some pretend they're dead. I would say they don't pretend they're dead, they just freeze out of fear. And they look dead to the animal, to the lion or whatever animal's attacking them. And um, it's quite an, uh, a natural instinct to not eat an animal that's already died because it may have a disease and it could kill the, the lion. I'm guessing there's some kind of inbuilt... Um, inbuilt knowledge there that's sort of a wisdom that animals have or it could be simple it's no fun because it's already dead maybe they, some animals just enjoy the, the killing of the animal I don't know and we are part of the animal kingdom When you think how easy it is to relate to an animal. Like I've got a ferret called Andre. Couldn't get further apart really from a human being and a ferret. But you couldn't get further apart from any animal, probably apart from a monkey, I suppose. It's monkeys sort of similar kind of faces and they've got their fingers and stuff. Although they Better with their better with their hat, uh, with their feet than humans are, aren't they? 
but I can relate to a ferret. I can kind of connect. We can connect with dogs. We can connect with cats. I mine's a ferret, but we we can connect. So we are part of that. I know we're not dogs, but we are connected to them in a in a, a weird kind of a way. So maybe those type of behaviours, there's behaviours that dogs have that we have. The inbuilt. The freezing. Dogs can freeze if they're scared. Tail between their legs. Petrified. And that's a horrible thing to see. But they also can run away. Also they can fight and bite. So, you know, we all have... Human beings have that same ability. And you... And that's caused by a trigger, caused by stress. Survival. And it's not caused by feeling happy, or being contented. It's not caused by feeling relaxed, or, you know, being in a good mood. That's due to something not being right. Which means your body and your mind is is helping you. It's trying to help you. With the stress, it's trying to actually help you. By putting you into whatever mode is needed. To run away from the danger. To freeze. Hoping that that will help. Or to fight. And there may be three F's. There's probably more F's. There's probably more A's. There's probably more to it. It's not as simple as just, you know, fight, flight, freeze. We like to make things simple, I think. But there's more to it. It's individual for each person. And you might think, well, if this is helping me... If the stress is helping me, then what's it helping me with? That's a good. That's a very good question. Do we need to know what it's helping you with? We want to know. I want to know. But there's a lot in our lives that perhaps need to be addressed things that cause stress or increase stress levels whether it's a relationship issue whether it's financial whether it's our behaviour such as drinking excessively drugs um, acting dangerously You know, things like gambling. Any kind of things that may be hurting us, potentially harming us, or just causing just causing something within you that doesn't feel right. And you know, it's I guess it's unrealistic to expect to be able to just walk around and spend every second of your life feeling relaxed. In fact, that wouldn't even be helpful. You know, we need to have the ability to run away, to fight, you know, maybe to freeze, I don't know. Uh, I never found the freezing bit helpful, to be fair, but... We need to have that ability to have... 
the for our adrenaline to kick in uh, for survival we need it to be there but we don't need it running the whole time and we need to be the ones that start it when we want it to start so we need to take control of the adrenaline you know the engine room because so much of everything that happens with us uh, is automatic you know all the internal organs everything like that so why not participate and maybe have a key to that adrenaline However, the stress has had control of that, perhaps forever, you know, all your life. The stress has had control of the adrenaline and when to kick it, you know, to start it. It's got the key, starts it, and it's almost like we've, we're a victim to it, in a sense. We're, we don't know when it's coming, and if it comes, we're like, well, how do we turn it off? The stress has the key to turn off the adrenaline. So maybe we need to make friends with the key keeper. Make friends with the stress. The key keeper of the adrenaline. You know, that feeling where you know, the anxiety is way, way higher. Now, if you get into a, if you're in a fight, let's say you're, um, you're a martial artist or a boxer and you're going into the ring, a tournament, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You, you've got the adrenaline, but it's controlled and you're releasing it. Uh, or any other sporting activity, the adrenaline is there, and it's needed. And it's but it's being used correctly. If you're sitting down in an office on a telephone, you don't need your adrenaline kicked in. You don't need that started. It's inappropriate. But your stress levels, because they may have risen, due to uh, anger, frustration, whatever is going on with you at that time, internally, emotionally, it thinks that the adrenaline's needed because that helps the stress to become bigger, more powerful, more able to help you because that's what it wants to do. It doesn't want to hurt you. Not any part of your body wants to hurt you. Your brain wants to help you. The thing that we do the most to harm ourselves is the way we think. Negativity. And the brain listens to us. So some of the things that the brain does. Is just because of the way we think. We're thinking about all these negative things. And you know the amount of times in the past. When I've been carrying something. And I thought. Oh I might drop this. And then I drop it. absolutely ridiculous it's almost as if the brain says yeah right then send a message down to the nervous down a spinal cord to your, your hands and have a little twitch of your hands so you drop the thing on the floor unless of course I'm carrying it with my feet and it's no twitch to the feet so so your brain your body 
and your stress care about you and want to do whatever it takes to help you but it doesn't always know what you need we need to tell our brains what we need if you need to feel more relaxed during a job interview that you've got coming up you need to tell your brain you need to tell your body so I guess in a way it's not just about making friends with your stress it's about making friends with yourself making friends with your body with your with your brain making friends with your heart your stomach your lungs however weird the concept is I mean the good thing about it if you make friends of all the different parts of your body you can go out and have a drink with them all or go and have a cup of coffee or have a little party and it's cheap because it's just only you there that's good So, in order to get hold of that key, so that you have control over the adrenaline system being started, or the adrenal system, maybe that's the correct term, being started with that key, for you to have that key, you need to make friends with your stress how do we do that we can say thank you which is the opposite to perhaps what you would want to do But you say thank you to your stress. Thank you for everything it does for you. Because your stress doesn't do anything to you. It does everything for you. Unfortunately, it just doesn't know what you need. It needs to be friends with you so that you can show it what you need so you can be connected so instead of pushing it away which is natural instead of pushing the stress away you welcome it you say come come on we'll be friends now and the more connected you are to the stress the less stress you'll have. And that stress will continue to help you, but in a way that's useful. Handing you the key so that if you need your adrenaline system to kick out and to start, to pump up, it's there whenever you need it. But because you have the key, it won't start on its own without that there are no panic attacks or anxiety attacks because it needs the adrenaline it needs basically feelings that are not required normally you know if you're sitting watching television and suddenly your, your body's full of energy for no reason you don't need that just in the same way as if you're driving you don't you don't want to start you don't want to feel tired you want to be able to feel awake when you're driving and nice and relaxed when you're watching television maybe I 
nice and relaxed. With Andre sneezing in the background. And you might say, well, how, how do I make friends with my stress? Well, listening to this, you kind of already have. You already have. But every day, you can spend a couple of minutes... And you can thank your stress for everything it does for you. And maybe you can tell your stress and your mind what you need. What you need for the day ahead, the month ahead, maybe what you need right now. Talk to the stress and say, I'd like to feel relaxed right now, please. And direct that to your stress, if that's what you're feeling. If you're feeling stress, direct, talk directly to it. Just say, please. Please can I feel relaxed now, that's what I need, I need to feel physically relaxed in my body and in my mind, just wait, and the more you do this, the more of a connection you make with your stress. When you think about the connections we have with our body that we're not even really that aware of. See, if you're moving, if you use your hands, it's a very aware, isn't it, of how you use your hands. We use them quite a lot for different things. So I'm quite aware of that. But my legs. I don't take much notice of my legs. I don't take a huge amount of notice of my chest. I mean, I use my ears all the time, hearing, but I take very little notice of the actual ears themselves. So by making friends with your stress, you start to, you know, it's, you start to travel together in harmony. And in the same way as if you're running a marathon, that might be a time when you say to the stress, come on, we've got to do this. Get that adrenaline going. We need to finish this marathon. Or if you're climbing a mountain. Or maybe you're just trying to stay awake to finish an essay for college. That might be a time when you need that extra energy, that extra alertness. So spend just a few minutes every day thanking your stress for what it does for you, what it has done for you, and what it will do for you. Moving away from the negativity of the past. 
leaving that stuff behind, focusing on now, making friends. And every day you can do this and it changes, things change and you'll notice the changes. And you can enjoy the changes that you experience. Feeling more relaxed, more able to deal with whatever life presents to you. And that's the end of this recording. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And make friends with your stress. Lots of love.